So after Dr. Lacturin speaks, we'll be ending the panel. So Dr. Lacturin. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say, you were gonna cut my part. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, let me just first say, I don't think we will be able to agree, develop any consensus about what that really means. One month ago, I was in Shanghai. Uh, there were 50 of us invited, uh, sponsored by Harvard and Amsterdam University College, and we could not agree. And I think you've seen already that there are different ideas about what liberal arts really constitutes, or what constitutes liberal arts. Our, our English motto mantra is discover your passion, maximize your unique potential. And I, I really liked what you said about the, you know, it, education is not about filling the pail, but lighting of a fire. And I, I strongly believe that. And I really think one of our major roles as educator is to help students find, find their passion and to develop their unique aptitude or potential. So with that said, um, let me continue. And, and uh, one more point, um, we decided not to use the word kyoyo. And that was the middle name of AIU in Japanese, Koksai Kyoyo Daigaku. So we use katakana because we don't think those two concepts are the same. At least the way we are operationalizing the concept of liberal arts education at ICLA. So uh, let's see. So what is liberal arts education in the context of ICLA? And there's this acronym. If you try to say it, it would sound something like Wibbukur, Wibbukur. Uh, Wide, balanced, uh, the C is, uh, geez, I just made this this morning. <laughs> connected, <laughs> connected, interdisciplinarity. The G, I wanted to say worldly, but that would have been two Ws, so global. And then finally, rigorous. So these are key concepts at ICLA. Wide, what we mean by that, is our curriculum spans the entire continuum of knowledge to the extent that we can do this with 26 faculty, from quantitative reasoning, math, statistics, physics, all the way to the other extreme. And I use the, the, the image of a right brain, left brain, so le left extreme, left brain, quantitative reasoning, math, and extreme right brain courses like performing arts in the humanities. And we accomplish that with what we call workshops. So this image, I think, is useful to help understand what I'm trying to say. Um, a liberal arts program offers a very broad menu of knowledge, brain food, extending from extreme right brain courses to extreme left brain courses. And we, Unlike, I think, a lot of other universities that call themselves liberal arts, they, they usually use the word kyoyo, uh, we, we started from zero. We created 140 brand new courses. We didn't just take courses that already existed and repackage them and call it liberal arts. This is not easy to do, but we did it. Uh, the second, balanced, I think what I mean by this is that every student has to experience the full menu of knowledge. They can't skip any areas in the menu. They gotta have fruit, salad, <laughs> meats. They gotta do the whole, they have to taste uni. <laughs> you know, don't like uni? Well, I'm sorry, you've gotta, you gotta do it once. So they're required to experience the full range that we offer. Um, we've, this is roughly how we have uh, balanced the curriculum. About 50% of it is in the humanities and these workshops. These are experiential learning opportunities, very lightweight courses, one credit courses. We're in an American uh, system with 124 cre credits. Use, all of our courses are three credits, but we have workshops that are light at one. Then the idea of connected, this means, what I mean by this is any 
liberal arts institution should have figured out and, and helped reinforce something that hopefully is happening in the heads of the students, this idea of connecting, knowledges, uh, connecting knowledge, inter operationalizing, institutionalizing uh, interdisciplinarity. So how do we connect these dots? Unfortunately, I think uh, Nakajima Sensei, I had many breakfast meetings with him when uh, we were in Akita, and he told me that liberal arts basically disappeared from Japan in the 1990s, and the whole education system shifted to more specialization. He was not happy with this. So, I mean, here again is this illustration, and you can see that the kind of different kinds of learning uh, at these two ends of the knowledge continuum. And what the outcomes are if you specialize in these two areas. And these bridges, you know, that, that's what we're trying to build, help the students build these bridges across knowledge. Steve Jobs, a few years before he died, uh, used this street sign to answer the question, what is Apple Computer? This sign helped me more deeply understand the importance of connectivity of knowledge. Liberal arts is very much the humanities, but also includes, as reflected in my previous slides, learning in the areas of quantitative reasoning, math, stats, physics, natural sciences, but does not include vocational training, which may be what Steve Jobs meant with the, the technology street sign. So um, here's what our, uh, the structure of our curriculum looks like. Um, our main mechanism to operationalize, institutionalize interdisciplinarity is writing, writing across the curriculum program, but there are other mechanisms that we use to, to do this in the way that we, we design the curriculum, uh, for example, or in policies such as open classrooms. How can you connect to what other people are teaching if you don't understand what they're teaching? So this, the faculty did not like at all. Uh, uh, they, they wanted uh, two or three days notice before another member of the faculty drops in on their class but I insisted that everything should be open. You should be able, and that's how we learn how to connect with what the other faculty are doing. I have this uh, illustration here to help uh, explain what I'm, I'm, this concept of inst institutionalizing interdisciplinarity. Some of these connections are obvious, some are not obvious. So like music, dance, obvious, economics, politics. So these things are obvious uh, intersections or potential, potential uh, intersections. And then there are some that are not obvious. And as was uh, mentioned by Suga sensei earlier, one of the favorite uh, uh, illustrations of this was, is this. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. But Einstein making this statement that the theory of relativity occurred to me by intuition and music is a driving force behind this intuition. And his parents had him study the violin and without his violin, he could, he said, he could not made, have made that giant leap to E equals MC squared. You can imagine it was coming out of his violin. <laughs> The other, uh, the next thing in my acronym is global. We are a very, very global institution. In fact, the, the campus in Kofu feels like a study abroad experience right in our complex. Uh, next semester, we will have more international students on campus, international degree seeking, which is a very difficult thing for Japanese universities to achieve and international short-term exchange students. All of our students have to do one year study abroad. It's all done under one-for-one -one cross waiver uh, of tuition arrangements. That also is extremely difficult to, to build, but we've got it. When the kids uh, go abroad, that, that's my experience in Akita, was that, that was the most life-changing 
thing that we were doing. But I like this one better because it's like turning the world upside down. They, they leave their comfort zone. We have partners. We're going to have 80 eventually. We now have about 30 in America, Europe, Asia, and Australia, New Zealand. And the last, rigorous. Uh, we have a world-class uh, faculty, uh, student-centered. This got mixed up a little bit. Um, we have a world-class faculty. I think 80% of our faculty, the regular faculty, is non-Japanese. I think this is the highest in Japan from really top schools. And importantly, we're student-centered. So this is what we look like. It's almost like all the classes are zemis. We are not like this. This is what we're trying to do. Have we really done well what we said we were going to do? I think if we could do this, and I think if, the, if it's done properly and there's no great inflation in, in the institution, the GPA should be measuring what, how much distance the students traveled in those four years that they were with us directly attributable to what we are doing. This, <laughs> I go back to the beginning. This is what we want to happen in our, and this. This dog can run with a ball on its nose. This is unique aptitude. Every student has unique aptitude. And that intersection of unique aptitude, natural talent, and their passion, I think, is the zone. Michael Jordan, my all-time favorite athlete, lived much of his life, his working life, in that zone. And that's what we hope that we can create for our students. How many adults, at the end of their careers, can say that they had a lot of passion in their work. So I believe that if we achieve that, we'll end up with people that have happy lives. Thank you.